What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Yesterday you could see the three smaller sets from the 2021 Speed Champions lineup. If you missed that video, then I suggest to watch it by clicking on the link in the top right corner. Today I will show you the first of the bigger ones. This is the 76905 Ford GT Heritage Edition and Bronco R set. Okay, so if I see a LEGO set that has a Ford GT in golf livery and a Bronco, I buy it, no questions asked. I'm sure you have similar feelings, so that was the review, enjoy your sets while stocks last. Joking aside, this is a real killer combination for me. I know the cars have nothing to do with each other besides the Ford badge, but still totally works. On the front of the box you can see each vehicle speeding in its natural habitat, very cool. On the back we get a sneak peek of their back view, some details and also two shots about the rear cars. Let's open the box and check out the contents. I still don't have official confirmation about the price, but the set should be available from the 1st of June. There are five numbered bags in the box, two sticker sheets and two manuals. Interestingly, the manuals are not numbered in this set, but based on the color scheme of bags content, it is not that difficult to figure out, we'll start with the Bronco. A few words about the Bronco R before we start the build. This race prototype was built to compete at the Baja 1000 in 2020. It had a stock powertrain but custom chassis, suspension and so on. For us poor folks in Europe, this is probably the only opportunity to see a Ford Bronco in almost real life, so let's start building. The base is pretty massive, it's actually a full layer of bricks with some classic ones in the middle and mostly headlight and other pieces on the sides. Another unusual element on a Speed Champion set, we use standard Technic axles, although unfortunately there's no working suspension at this scale, yet. The build is not that special or interesting so far until the end of bag 1, we have studs everywhere. The seats and the center console is in place, we built a base for pretty much anything else. Here is some reception, a transparent headlight piece. Did not see this one since the Volkswagen Transporter. They are used to hold the big bold Bronco labeled grille at the front, it will be interesting to see what remains visible of the transparent pieces and what is their purpose. After some additional pieces in the middle, we start to build the side panels using some neat snot techniques. It was actually quite a challenge to push it in place, as you can see it on the other side. Meanwhile, I added the steering wheel and a bunch of other smaller pieces. A slight issue with the grill section, it is very easy to knock it off during building. It would have been a better choice to add it only at a later stage. We are now at the end of back 2 and as you can see there's a cool roll cage built along with the A-pillars. Everything still flaps around, I wonder if this will be addressed or not going forward. Here's a top view of the build that shows a bunch of stickers for the hood and also helps clarifying how the roll cage and the A-pillar elements should be aligned properly. Actually there are extra pieces that help with the alignment. When I put this 1x4 plate in place, that pushes the two central blue rods in the correct position. The A-pillars use those small black round pieces as stoppers to be at the correct position and the other two roll cage elements can be now adjusted accordingly. Now comes the front bumper with some nice details. As you see it helps to keep the grille section in place. After finishing the front area now comes the rear section with the side panels. The attachment technique is actually pretty clever and once it clicks in place the angle is totally fixed. Time to add the wheels and we also get two spare ones for the rear. It is also worth to note that we get the classic rims, fat tires and smaller wheel covers for this build. Interestingly, we only get four wheel inserts so the spare ones will remain empty or we can use the other type for them. Or probably better not since the roof has an element that holds the spare wheel in place and that is a pretty snug fit. With the driver in place it's actually quite a challenge to put everything in place but at the end it works. So here is the finished massive Bronco R. It really looks fantastic from all angles. Yes, I am a Bronco fanboy, but this thing is beautiful. The size is no illusion. This build stretches the new 8 stud speed champion standard since the width is actually 9 studs, plus the wheels. From the front you can see the purpose of the transparent pieces around the grille. They represent the LED lights scattered on the real vehicle in a similar way. This one is a pretty clever angled piece usage, using the minifigure posing stand that was introduced last year. The rear section looks also cool with the cage around the spare tires. The number 2069 has two parts, 20 shows the race class where it was competing and 69 honoring the year when its ancestor won the Mexican 1000. The top is easy to remove, this way we can get access to the spare wheels and to the cabin as well. There's a sticker with some instruments and there are two simple seats and of course the roll cage I showed you previously. 
The driver has a very cool printed torso with the Bronco logo. Let me know in the comments if you know where could I get a jacket like this one for myself. The lady also has a black hairpiece to replace the helmet. Unfortunately, with that one, she does not really fit in the cabin. I could only have two complaints about this set. First, why is this not a Technic car? The second is the lack of suspension. LEGO was already able to put a working suspension in smaller Speed Champions cars, such as the Mini or the Ford Raptor. A Baja Racer Bronco R should really deserve proper suspension. Okay, time to switch to the Ford GT Heritage Edition. This special edition was created in 2020 to commemorate the 1969 Le Mans winning Ford GT40 with the iconic Gulf Oil livery. That year the car had the number 6. There was also another Heritage Edition with the number 9 the previous year, because that was the number of the car in 1968. The beginning of the build is quite conventional, the orange 2x4 bricks won't be visible going forward, but I guess they are not to the Gulf livery. The rear bumper is a snug fit between those L-shaped pieces. This is how the build looks like at the end of back 4. A small part of the interior and most of the rear is finished. The angle transparent engine cover is actually pretty clever. It can be moved around a little bit without the surrounding pieces, but once they go in place the whole section is rock solid. These are the hinges that will hold the angled side panels. The interior also got more details with the seats and the sticker for the different instruments. The train roof piece is not new, but I'm actually quite surprised that it was never used in a Speed Champion set before. It can so obviously become a front spoiler. Surprisingly, the front headlights are not stickers. I guess LEGO did not want to make the same mistake what they did with the Supra, as the stickers cannot stretch edge to edge on the piece and look weird. Instead of that mistake, they made another one. Here's an alignment issue on the small piece. It's such a shame, quality control should definitely catch these. I was extremely lucky here since there's a spare printed piece in the bag and that one is a better fit. This means if you are lucky then two out of the three pieces will match. The front of the car is held in place with the usual clips and it is angled. So here is our finished car. The Golf livery is absolutely gorgeous. We could argue if this is the exact shade of blue or not, but when I tried to look up the original that one had different variations as well. The main point, it is instantly recognizable. I love the orange accents, and the central stripe works well too. It is stickers mostly, apart from the printed windshield. The shade of the printed colors does not match exactly the bricks and the stickers, but it's much much better than in other cases, for example the print on the Yesco. The overall body shape is good, the front works very well, I totally love the look of the splitter and the angled nose. We have the number 6 sticker on the front and on the sides as well. As I mentioned, this is not a mistake. That was the number reserved for the 2020 Heritage Edition GTs. I know there are more photos online with number 9. That was the 2019 edition referring to the winning car of 1968. You can actually turn the sticker around, although in that case their position will be less correct. I really like the angled sides with the massive air intake, although this is the area where some limitations of the scale start to show. The original 4 GT has a very complex body shaping at the rear, with a significantly narrowing rear end, covers over the rear wheels and an arc connecting the two with a huge gap between them. The gap is practically missing from the model, but I think this is a completely understandable considering the scale and the limitation of the brick. We can appreciate the effort from the top view. As you see, the angled body lines starting from the doors are actually followed by the triangular plates at the rear, with some black stickers trying to simulate the gap between the body sections. I already mentioned the angled transparent engine cover, and below that you can actually see the tiny representation of the 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost engine. The rear again looks nice, here we actually get the proper gap between the sections. The central dual exhaust are stickers only, but the rear lights are using transparent run plates. The usage of the horizontal grille piece in the middle of the diffuser is interesting, on the original you have a small light there, but it is still dominated by the vertical fins of the diffuser. The interior is all black, some details are added with the sticker in the center, and the seats look also cool with the headrest and the central brick built silver line. The driver has a classic color scheme with the printed torso. He actually looks very much like the minifig we got in the 2016 Speed Champion set, but this time the stripes on the jacket match the golf livery. Very cool detail. Speaking of the previous 4 GT and GT40 set, 
If we put them side by side, we can really appreciate the added level of detail and the improved proportions that came with the 8 stud white sets. So, let's sum it up. I think you already know my opinion about the set. I totally love both cars and I think despite their difference, they look great together and work well as a pack. Both of them are pretty accurate and despite some small annoyances like the misaligned prints of the headlights or the lack of suspension on the Bronco, I can highly recommend the set. It is truly one of my favorites from the 2021 Speed Champions lineup. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss the upcoming Speed Champions reviews or my other LEGO videos. See you next time, bye bye.